This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about The Ruling Class from 1972, directed by Peter Medic. The synopsis here from Letterboxd. When the Earl of Gurney dies in a cross-dressing accident, his schizophrenic son, Jack, inherits the Gurney estate. Jack is not the average nobleman. He sings and dances across the estate and thinks he is Jesus reincarnated. Believing that Jack is mentally unfit to own this estate, the Gurney family plots to steal Jack's inheritance. As their outrageous schemes fail, the family strives to cure Jack of his bizarre behavior with disastrous results. So, RJ... I'd seen this movie before. Uh, in fact, I actually had the receipt uh, for this very movie uh, in the DVD case still when I got it from Criterion.com back in 2013. Wow. Uh, yeah. Big, big, big moment here. Actually, the next, like, 12 movies that we're watching, I own all of them. So, Nerd. Nerd. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, I'd watch this probably five years ago last. Um, and I remember a few things that all seem to be pretty consistent uh, this time around. I remember, and you reminded me of this when we were about to start watching this, uh, you're like, Jesus Christ, two and a half hours. And I went, mm-hmm. oh yeah, the movie's two and a half hours long. I remember uh, it, it probably not needing to be that long. But then I also remember that it's got like one of the like, Best, like one of those like all time best scenes I think ever in a movie that like totally Ooh. still s- sticks in my mind like <laughs> real hard and like really like, yes yeah I uh, we'll get there uh, I th- yeah so this is a movie that I like this movie um, and I can mm-hmm. totally understand why this movie wouldn't work for a lot of people uh, and that's because it's a black comedy um, and it's also a satire and I mean it's hard enough for comedy to hit let alone mm-hmm. the sort of like subgenre of the black comedy cuz usually they're not for everybody and even the for people who do like black comedy sometimes it works and sometimes it really doesn't work so it's a real coin toss of a movie particularly since this is a movie that's also like a satire of I guess mm-hmm. the, what the title is, the ruling class, uh, the the noble class of Britain, uh, which was it's kind of like a an easy target for like a lot of British like cinema and television and books and plays. Uh, this started off as a play for, uh, in the '60s that uh, Peter O'Toole actually starred in as well, and then he bought the rights for this. Uh, mm-hmm. and it was Peter Medic, I guess, like they were out drinking as one would do with Peter O'Toole, uh, one of the great legendary alcoholics of uh, the theater and cinema. Um, him and yeah. Ol- him and Oliver Reed. There's like a whole book on them. They're Hellraisers or something like that. Uh, not to be not the Clive Barker <laughs> kind. I was gonna. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, good old Alkies. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, this movie though, it's a long slide to those amazing final acts. But the movie starts off with, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of funny that we just watched Ordet like just a few weeks ago, which is also about mm-hmm. a movie about a man who thinks he's Jesus and uh, mm-hmm. goes around pontificates. So it's kind of neat that these movies happen so, uh, so close together in our chronology. And uh, it reminded me there's a Werner Herzog uh, documentary uh, about like all these men in Russia who think they're Jesus because mm-hmm. there's lots of guys there's lots of mentally ill men who grow beards and hair and they've been raised in like Christian society and then they start thinking yeah you know what I, I think I'm Jesus and they're all operating you know unbeknownst to one another and then it's like well what happens when Jesus men meet each other like what happens <laughs> um, so anyway this is a movie about a guy who thinks he's Jesus for but he also looks kind of like the lion from Wizard of Oz, but he's a little bit, and, but he's played by Lawrence of Arabia, uh, great screen legend Peter O'Toole. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I do like this movie. Uh, like I said, two and a half hours, it's pro- probably on the long side, it just doesn't mm-hmm. really need, need to go that far. Um, this is one of those movies uh, I've made comments a few times that I'm very curious what you thought about it uh, mm-hmm. because it could go a lot of different ways uh, depending on how things hit. Uh, for me, there's like just like lots of good, like the character strokes of all of it. It's like a comedy, so it's not like an in-depth character piece. Uh, so you have like, guess you have like Tucker the butler 
who's the acerbic mm-hmm. uh, little like piece of shit butler who's like a socialist who like can't wait to like mm-hmm. burn it down, but he does a whole lot of nothing, and that's like a core part of his character. Old Tuck. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you have uh, uh, was he uh, Sir Charles, who I think uh, is quite good, is sort of that the uh, uppity pompous. Uh, British lord who just is scheming for money and is very proper. Everyone does their roles okay. His wife is exactly what you expect of the indifferent, judgmental, self-amused woman with her own scheming mm-hmm. or whatever. You have his, you have uh, Jack's future wife uh, who does this great strip tease scene and then oh they're, 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 great they're, you great, say great, great, great striptease scene and to to nobody in particular <laughs> to no one in particular to a man who's in the other room who rides in on a tricycle afterwards um we got a uh, nigel green who gets to play the high voltage messiah uh, uh the uh, the electric christ the electric christ uh, yeah yep mm-hmm. yeah uh so that's that's a heck of a scene and you get mm-hmm. an, 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 an ape suit uh, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, and then so the whole movie it's just like a big build of like, uh, yes, you have uh, Garney, Garney the Thirteenth who dies asphyxiation in the it's very play like the movie's like mm-hmm. feels very much like a stage play that's been adapted. Uh, you get song and dance numbers that are like the one in particular, the one it's the varsity drag, I think it is. Uh, so. which one is that what, uh, which the, setting the, the, is that, that it's while well, they're all like in that the setting of that house god is that the name of that song um it's like the 1930s show tune that peter o'toole sings but it's like been like post dub recorded so the audio was like it doesn't sound at all convincing and mm-hmm. it's, it's, but it's very whatever it's movies and it's a comedy it doesn't have to like have naturalistic sound uh mm-hmm. the varsity drag yes that song um, it pipes in and there's a few other little, like very br- fortunately, very brief musical interludes. They don't mm-hmm. like overstay their welcome and run like five minutes and bring a lot of attention to themselves. They're like throwaway gags. Right. So, so I'm okay uh, for me. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Do you want me to tell you what I really, really like about this movie? This yeah. Lay it on me. Okay. So Big dog. So the whole movie is just the setup of this guy. And I guess like the the satire of the movie is that uh, you have this the god of love in 20th century Earth in England, and he's mm-hmm. trying to spread this message that kind of runs the opposite of how society is, and that's the way it's always going to be. Um, is that this message of love and understanding? It's just like kind of looked upon negatively and laughed at. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not until uh, the sh- the flip happens and the the god of murder, Jack the Ripper, uh, is then presented that everyone starts becoming, oh, he's perfectly normal now. Oh, oh, oh. And it's like, that's cute. Uh, but then it like goes beyond that in this, like these scenes of Peter O'Toole's transformation, which are all like kind of slow and subtle. And mm. it, you know, builds to him actually murdering a woman. And, uh, but there's still like talk of the, Hokey Chokey, uh, which mm-hmm. is not the Hokey Pokey, which I think the rest of civilization outside of this movie would refer to it as. Um, but yeah, that scene, that shot of Peter O'Toole looking at the camera and screaming, uh, I think is just like, like so amazing. Uh, it, Cause it's like this really intense, like camera pull up of him staring, not breaking eye contact. And it's just like, it's like, mm-hmm. which like so animalistic. It's just like, good God. Like, that's like all I think about when I think of this movie is that shot. Um, and mm-hmm. then I kind of forgot like immediately after that is when we go to, uh, whatever the house of Lords and he's giving his like big ridiculous speech about just like <laughs> killing people. And then you get this like mm-hmm. montage of him, like talking to this hall of like the undead. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I was like, man, this is like so, uh, like so good and interesting and like, totally fits into like another type of movie. And I'm like, why don't I see something like this more often where it's just like so brutal. Uh, and then you get like this like final murder scene, uh, which is like kind of like done as like a half dream. And it's like, it could be real. It could be happening in his mind. And you get this like another like horrifying scream as it pulls away and the music comes in, uh, mm-hmm. out of the shining. I don't know. Like the final, like 10, 15 minutes of this movie, I think are just like fantastic, uh, movie making. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I think this, I, I like this movie. Um, I think I really like, because I like those scenes so much at the end, I 
probably like this movie overall on the whole. But I could definitely see why some people would be like, this movie drags. Uh, maybe the satire comedy doesn't work. If you're not into British stuff, if you're not into like British br- stuff, br- Britishness, uh, I could see this mm-hmm. movie really not being appealing because it's a very dry British humor on top of the black comedy. So it's got layers and layers of layers of things that are just not going to be for everybody. But I think the, it's a pretty interesting movie. You could roll it up into other movies that we've watched of late, like Diary of a Chambermaid, uh, mm-hmm. Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie. Lots of just attacks on the the ruling class, the the elites, the the 1% types, the mentality of them, the absurdity of those people. This movie fits into that line lineage of like the Criterion Collection and mm-hmm. uh, their ongoing politics. Uh, but RJ, as I said earlier, I'm very curious. What do you think? Of the ruling mm-hmm. class. I wonder <clears throat> why you were so curious of my opinion of this movie. Why? You're, is that a question? Yeah. I, I, as always, there's certain types of movies like this where it's a black comedy mm-hmm. um, and it kind of plays by non conventional rules, I guess, of storytelling and expectations. Mm. Like a movie like this, it's very 60s, 70s. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes I think we've encountered those types of movies and you've been turned off by them. And always, but it's not, but it's not consistent. It's not like you're like always like, I hate these movies. Sometimes yeah. you like them, but sometimes it's like, nope, I don't like this at all. And then you're just yeah. checked right out. So this is a movie that like, I think straddles those lines. So it could go mm-hmm. either, it could go either way with you. So that's again, why I'm interested. <laughs> you could say that I'm rather unconventional in my watching and my re- reviews, I guess then sometimes you're a wild card. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a wild card. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure how to approach this, uh, to talk to you about it. My first note was Ace Ventura question mark because of the man in the tutu. Uh, but here's what I think about this movie as a whole. That's what I was just laying out for you as, uh, my first, my very first impression of this movie. It it was that it reminded me of Ace Ventura, right? The ruling class. This is, as you put it, a black comedy. This is a satire. This is, as I would describe it, uh, absurdist humor, which I've, I've brought up on this show before and I can, I'll explain what I mean by that later. Uh, I think this movie straddles a lot of lines like you and me often do. Uh, It is this mix between this political statement and this cultural societal statement. Uh, But it's also very self-aware in what it is. And it likes to poke fun at all the things that it's showing you. So it'll have a statement and it'll poke fun at it. Uh, but it also knows that it's poking fun out of it. So self-aware in that sense is what I mean. Uh, this film, Jarrett, uh, I think uh, I'm going to throw you way off here. Uh, when you said I sometimes I, I dig these movies, sometimes I hate them. Uh, I was very in the middle for this. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that I really enjoyed. And there was a lot of stuff that uh, was, I think, totally lost on me. Um, not that I disliked it. I think this movie's a very long, drawn-out way of saying. I think this movie's okay. I think it's pretty, like there's enough of it that I like that I would. Uh, I think it's good. Uh, but there's enough of it that I was like not totally on board with that. Uh, I don't think. I don't think it's great or anything like that. Sure. Uh, so some of the stuff I didn't like. Uh, I feel, uh, as we mentioned, it's very long and that's fine. Whatever. Uh, I watch, we watch, or we watch long movies all the time. Uh, but I think some of the, some of the satire stuff was a bit much for me. Uh, I know you mentioned that the song and dance numbers were short, but I thought that they were, uh, far too many of those things. Uh, after one or two, I was like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, but after the fourth one, I was like, I'm done with this. I don't need it anymore is, in here. Is there more than four? Uh, it might be just four. Yeah. Uh, but the one with me that really lost me was uh, the bird song scene where uh, JC and his bride to be are making bird calls to each other, walk uh, like dancing around uh, that one. And like, again, that's a thing that it's so subjective. Like if that was in, say, an episode of Family Guy. Some people would probably think it was fucking hilarious uh, because Family Guy does shit like that all the time. Like 
like I said, absurdist type humor stuff. It'll, it'll be like that. Uh, but if those same people watched it in this movie, they might be like, oh, I don't like that. Um, and like I didn't dislike it or anything like that. It was just like, eh, I don't care for this. Mm-hmm. So th- there are scenes like that where I was like, I'm not totally on board for that kind of stuff. But uh, there was a lot of humor in this that I thought was really fucking good. Real good, Jarrett. Um, so when I when I talk about the absurdist thing, just to clarify that, I feel like the best example I could say that my people might understand more simply what I mean is like the the family guy thing where stuff kind of just happens and you're like it doesn't always make sense and it's kind of out of nowhere uh one of the my favorite ones in this movie was uh they're taking a walk down like the courtyard of the mansion or whatever and they're talking about like people they know and they look and uh there's people like around them Uh, and there's one scene where they like look and there's a guy tied to a tree and they just keep walking and they walk past them like almost as if they they don't like they're like, oh, yeah, that's uh, that's Bill. He's tied to a tree there. And uh, I saw that and I was like, I was like, what? I was like, what is this? What is this fucking movie? Because I think up until then, there wasn't anything like that. Like you have this scene with the uh, the auto erotic asphyxiation molder style. And um, you're, you're kind of like, all right, that's goofy. Some, some uh, David Carradine. Yeah, some David Carradine stuff there. Uh, I always uh, remember um, people always joke that uh, on the X-Files, the only way they would kill off Mulder on the show is through uh, auto-erotic asphyxiation. So uh, I thought that was always funny. But So you have that scene, which is goofy. But then right after, you have that scene where the guy's tied to the tree. And I was like, like, all right, this movie's movie's out of bounds, Jarrett. Out of bounds. Off the hook. Uh, Off the hook. So there was a... There was like absurdist stuff like that that I thought was like some of them. Some of them I thought was really funny. Some of them I was like, yeah, I think they're overreaching a little bit. But there's other there was a lot of really good like one like simple gags where it's like set up punchline. Like uh, there's the one lady. She or it's a lady or guy. They're talking to JC and they're like, reveal your godhood. And he unzips his pants. I was like, nice. I was like, that that's a perfect <laughs> like really simple joke for me. I was like, I love shit like that i think it's so funny uh the electric christ i thought was really funny the acdc god the electric messiah uh i thought that guy was awesome uh the wrestling bear i thought was really cool too uh and then there's there's just there's some lines of dialogue that i think are really funny like the uh um when they're talking and, and it's not even i don't think these were supposed to be funny but they were fun funny to me there's a line where he's talking about uh when he's getting um, like the test to see if he's uh, psychotic or whatever. And they're like, you need to satisfy the lunatic master. And the guy's like, Oh, that term's uh, out of fashion now. And I was like, the lunatic master was like, was that a fashionable term in the, in England? It might've been, been. I don't know. It could have been. So uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, And then I think actually, uh, as we mentioned a lot, the film craft, Mm -hmm. the artisan film craft, I think this movie is, um, really well edited and put together uh yeah the, in the, a the, humorous the, style and the camera works actually really good the cam- like yeah. it, it's the you the zoom ins and stuff like that the zoom ins exactly yeah. so there, there's a lot of scenes where they set up something and then they zoom in on people's faces and sometimes it'll like go through everyone and then it'll go through them again and i find that really funny <laughs> or like uh like the drunk butler when uh they're moving up the table and it zooms in on him and he's like oh my god <laughs> and it's like zooming in on him that's really funny there's like the uh, one, I, I love the shots of the uh the idiot son like because even this like that the the kid who's just like you know he's this grown adult and he's just like this little snot nose like a little uh public school kid who's had everything handed to him and he he just talks like an idiot uh and like his facials yeah. are like his facials in that movie are like in the movie consistently uh, make me chuckle because uh he plays yeah. that he plays that type to a t because it's very similar to the idiot son in um Pygmalion too. It's a oh, yeah. it's a yep. trope of uh, that. I always I always appreciate that. I like I love dumb people in movies, but mm-hmm. I, but funnily enough, I hate dumb people in real life. Oh, see how that works. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, so the last thing I was gonna say about the editing uh, camera work, the one scene I thought was actually 
really, really well done and super, super funny is uh, there's this really sharp, fast cut. And it's when he's getting the polygraph test. And uh, they're like, are you the Christ? Yeah. And he's like, no. And then it zooms on that on that guy. He's like, he's lying. <laughs> or it's something like that. Like it just, is it that he's lying or that he's, I think it's that he's lying, right? Like they're well, like. Well, when, yeah, when he says, are you are, are you the son of God? And he goes, no. And then it blows up because yeah, it, it shows that he lied. Yeah. Uh, that he, scene. Because he is the God man. Because he is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I thought that was so funny. That I think that was probably my favorite scene of this movie. Uh, so there's stuff like that that I think is uh, really well done in this show. Um, the one music number I did like was uh, the Dem Bones one. Oh, We're yeah. Talking about Dem Bones. Uh, I liked that one because right. I just thought it was funny that. Right before going on the fox hunt. Yeah, which that bummed me out, but uh, I did like the Dem Bones. You got to see all those cute little dogs. You did get to see some cute dogs and an animatronic fox. P- pissing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, while we're on the talk about animals, uh, there was a, a stereotaxic uh, surgery set up in this where it looked like they were actually doing uh, like brain surgery on these rats, which they probably were. Because well, when was this, the 70s? There, well, there wasn't the, a lot the, of regulations there some, at those yeah, times. Yeah, there were some close-ups where mm-hmm. the, then the actors kind of moved around these close-ups of things happening. And it's like, yep. oh... Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I have seen uh, those images are burned in my brain so hard of like the open skull that uh, when I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, they did crack open that rat's skull for real. Yeah. His skin was pulled back. And I was like, bummer. <laughs> bummer, man. Uh, so anyways, that that's not a big deal for me. But I was like, oh, hey, look, a stereo tax. Cool. <laughs> uh, so the, the what, only what other... I love to see in my black comedies <laughs> in my black comedies. Yeah. Like surgical, uh, like animal surgeries. Uh, so there is two other things I'll mention. Um, the one thing, uh, one other thing that I didn't love that kind of took me out of it was uh, I thought the switch to the Jack the Ripper stuff was a little bit abrupt. Where it was like, okay, he's not Christ anymore. And then it's like, he's Jack the Ripper now. And like, it's not that it just happens and you're not given any like uh, setup or like any information to understand what's going on. Like, I understood what was going on. I just thought it was like very kind of, it just, it just happens. And you're like, okay, he's Jack the Ripper now. And I was like, oh, it's kind of uh, out of nowhere. But well, see, um, I guess like, I've always liked the idea that he's like don't call me jack <laughs> and it's just like because your yeah. whole time you're like i never it never crossed my mind what that was where the direction of the movie was ever going he's gonna go yeah because yeah. like but it's weird because like when you see the dvd it's got this photo of like him all cleaned up with like a halo over his head and in, in like a okay. in a hat and like i never thought about it too much being like because like the whole movie he's like creepy long-faced uh, lion Christ. Jesus, and yeah. it's like he's like very like ugh. like he's not appealing looking at all. He's like mm-hmm. the the hair goes up his cheekbones in the wrong way, and uh, his he, his his makeup and stuff like that because like he, he just looks so weird. His appearance is upsetting. Yeah, but I is I, what I could say. I fucking love his white suit though. Like the, his like oh. his get up in the whole movie. It's so great because like that's the one thing that I. Uh, uh, I was appreciating about this movie is like all like the tall, long, lean guys in this movie because mm-hmm. no, no one's tall, skinny, and lean anymore. Everyone's just like beefy and fat, and it's like, oh, look how look how fit and fine these people were back in the seventies mm-hmm. with with fitted clothing and whatnot. Yeah, they look good, man. Yeah. They looked real sharp. Uh, the only last thing I'll say, and I think. Uh, it is uh, what you said was your favorite scene of the whole movie. Uh, I thought that was the ending to the movie when it happened. It it it, it doesn't not, it doesn't not feel like the last shot. It, it's it seems like it's the last shot of the movie. And all I could think, and I wrote it down, was jungle fever. Because if you remember, Jared, when I was when we did the Spike Lee episode, yeah. and I was talking about the ending to Jungle Fever, when Wesley Snipes look up, looks up, and he's like, "No," uh, that was all I could think of. I was like, "Holy shit! Did they just pull a Jungle Fever on me right here?" Uh, and then it went on for another like 15 minutes. But uh, I, <laughs> I, I think it's funny that uh, that's that's your favorite scene. It, it it's nice, it's cool. But at the same time, I was like, "Oh my god." Spike Lee stole this for Jungle Fever. 
the most ludicrous, insane ending of any movie I have ever seen. I kind of feel like that's like not a uncommon shot in movies, but I found that in this, it's like very like power. Like he, like he seems so unhinged in that. And like, yeah. there's a bit where it seems like his eyes almost go bloodshot on command. Is he yep. screaming? Cause like, there's like the low, like, it's like, Oh, mm-hmm. he's, he's really doing it. He's going there. Cause there's like the whole build up of his, like as the psyche he's breaking down. Mm-hmm. Because like when he's like, there's like one weird shot like of when he's kind of like left out in like the somewhere on the estate like out in like by a tree and he's just kind of like talking to himself and the camera is like zoomed in on him over like kind of like in that god's eye view and he mm-hmm. kind of like he's being spied on he's just like rambling around and he's like he's playing insanity really really well because like nothing he's saying mm-hmm. makes any sense like it doesn't have there's no like writerliness to it it's not like he's they're being clever it just seems like no this guy is just like off the bend like he's nuts and then he just it's, he's got the stutter he's doing uh yeah. like for that part and like he's you know doing a good stutter uh an actually stutter and then mm-hmm. when he kind of finally starts when he does the the interview with his uh old classmate that it's revealed and mm-hmm. uh he's like oh suddenly oh we're all good we're all we all the same values and it's like oh that only becomes apparent when you stop talking about love and being god that when you become <laughs> like a sociopath uh, I mean, it's like pretty well pick where American Psycho picks up where this movie leaves off is this idea that like you're actually adjusted for like contemporary life when you become a uh, wearing that mask of sanity. Mm. And uh, yeah. And then like he, his final speech of just like talking to like this chamber of the dead uh, and these people all plotting the, his madness. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I get it. Oh, it's, it's not subtle at all, but I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't give a shit. It's it's like, uh, I love the imagery of it. Um, I like kind of the honesty of it. And uh, I mean, I, I haven't actually seen any of the episodes of uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's show. Um, uh, who, who, this is this America. is America. Or, yeah. Uh, or yeah. who is yeah? And who is America? Who is America? And like this, this is idea, America like is you, the, you can you yeah. can get people to agree with like all sorts of ridiculous things and mm-hmm. uh, and go along with it, or they reveal themselves uh, with the fact that they're comfortable with these things without thinking about it. And uh, yeah. it's, it's, this is the same concept, uh, pretty well, <laughs> except that he views them as all dead and potentially they're they're all going to die eventually, uh, perhaps <laughs> even by his hand. And he'll and you can get away with it because no one's going to look take you very seriously as a threat. Because I mean, wow, he's such a polished, upstanding citizen. Yeah. Kind of like that's kind of like how people describe you. Yeah, we won't talk You're, about that anymore. You ever think about that, man? <laughs> you ever think about how you're kind of a bad dude? I try to stuff that down back in the cellar, where hmm. w- with my inner child. Oh, what's he doing in there? <laughs> I don't know. Probably kicking dogs or something. Oh, Jarrett, <laughs> Jarrett. Yeah. Well, uh, well, anyways, um, I don't have a whole lot more to say, but yeah. uh, I liked it. I'm not real hot on it. Right. I don't super dislike it. There were things I thought were really funny and things about the movie I thought were real good. And then there were things that I was like, yeah, take her to leave it. So, yeah, it's a movie. Uh, yeah. For me, like I, I, I like I like this movie. Uh, yep. and it's I like its ambition. I like the the, the the scale of it. Uh, what they're trying to do. Uh, and like like I said, like that the last fifteen twenty minutes of this movie, I think are dope. And, <gasps> and uh, oh, drop the it's, dope. It's, but, in it, there. but it's all built to it, right? And so yep. I mean, the stuff along the way, it's like it's not too bad. It's hit or miss, like you said. Um. So, I mean, like, I don't know what I would I be like. Mm, I think previously when I starred this bad boy, I'd be like a three and a half out of five. And it's like mm. I'd bounce between that and like a four or something yep. like that. Like a very strong recommend for me anyway for like this is the type of movie I wish I could see more of like this. Yeah. There's like a, one movie that like one day like, it kind of fits into this for me. It's called The Magic Christian and it stars uh, mm. Ringo Starr and uh, I think it's Peter Sutton. Ringo. Yeah. And uh, it's very similar and it's – uh tone like it's but it's like Mm -hmm. it's way more comedy though but it's also Mm. uh, it hates society in a similar kind of way hmm here's the important thing Derek. yeah can you analyze the gorilla fight scene and uh, explain to me about those sweet wrestling moves he he was doing oh what what, what spots well he's definitely dropping some uh like like some like backbreakers across his knee i noticed that yeah what, yeah. what else was he? There was a, he just threw him down some stairs. Mm-hmm. 
that was pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, when he first came in, I didn't think that was a gorilla. I thought that was um, it looked like a bear or something. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> like what? What? But I did. I I did really enjoy the uh, the electric Christ. Uh, I thought that guy was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, Nigel Prince is a good dude. Because he's yeah. also oh, in uh, a Quatermass experiment. Or uh, the Quatermass of the Pit. One of those okay. two. He's one of those numbers. Did we talk about Alistair Sim at all? Ebenezer Scrooge Oh, no, we, no, I didn't. No, completely neglected to mention yeah. him. Yeah, Alistair Sim. Uh, also lanky, lean. Mm. Um, playing Unfortunate. The, yeah, very uh, blithering and blothering and uh, beside himself at all mm-hmm. times. Yeah. He's got a great face, doesn't he? He does. And he's got a bumbling, mumbling talk that uh, it's just so Ebenezer Scrooge. But, but on a different level, like, cause mm. it's like he's, he's uncertain of himself. He doesn't have the confidence of an Ebenezer. No, he's uh, he's really scared. Yeah. In this movie. Quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Quite a real bit. <sighs> uh, yeah. Anyways, Peter O'Toole is kind of creepy looking. He's a weird dude. Weird. Like he looks dude. good in Lawrence of Arabia, but when I was watching this, like not even just when he's like the Christ, but when he was just kind of, yeah. like after he gets shaved, the, I was yeah, like, his... "Fuck, Peter O'Toole's weird." <laughs> yeah. You know, is he still alive? No. Oh, I thought. See, well, him and Kirk Douglas went out. Oh, he like, died like in their prime five years ago. Well, I was right around when Kirk Douglas died. Remember uh, Lion in Winter? That movie's great. Is that a good show? I've never seen it. Didn't I make you watch that? Yeah, I mean, you watched that. That's the My, uh, which lo- one? the Lion in Winter. I'm pretty sure I made you watch that. Uh, it's like the uh, it's like the medieval movie, and it's like about the scheming sons. It's got like young Anthony Hopkins. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I know uh, that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's. In I that. give it four stars. King Henry the Second's three sons. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good in that. Jotty loves me best. So awesome. Oh, good st- uh, do some more British accents for the show. <laughs> no, that's here. that's like the 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 latchkey uh, scumbaggy guy. Just do just do a little more over there, Jared. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Uh, hit me with a little more uh, that uh, stuff. Oh, by the way, speaking of Peter Tool's uh, upsetting uh, appearance, his mustache in this movie made me so fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. Because it's really thin on the lip, yeah. like on top of the lip, but it's really thick and heavy on the sides. Oh, yeah. And I know that's a very common look for people, <laughs> but I was like, ew. <laughs> ew. Yeah, good old, yeah, there was a, there was a, troubling soup strainer yeah i like peter o'toole best in wings of fame he just looks like a republican whoa you know what i mean i i I don't but strong politics yeah anyways anyways hey who hates this movie i can imagine some people (laughs) are this movie's not for them uh i agree so one star from cat versus kirk I feel like the Criterion Collection is a simple rubric for whether or not to add a comedy to their line. Is this movie as knee-slappingly funny as noted laugh right Garrison Keillor, but also super pretentious? Nuts to this mess of a movie. Who is um, Garrison Keillor? Garrison, okay, you look up Garrison Keillor, and I'll tell you about Cat versus Kirk. Okay, Cat versus Kirk likes some Criterions. Like being John Malkovich and oh, all that jazz. Yeah. All that jazz. They also are a big fan of Army of Darkness, which I feel like is ironic because I don't think there's a lot of people who like really like that movie. Yeah. Oh, and a lot of like uh, coming of age uh, girl movies, uh, all of them starring Sars Hey Ronan, like Brooklyn and Lady Bird hmm. and Jaws. So Garrison Keillor. Okay. Yeah. He's the pr- uh, Prairie Home Companion guy. Hmm. Prairie Home Companion. You're not. You never. You never watched the uh, the Robert Altman movie. Ah <laughs> uh, no. Um, okay. So Prairie Home Companion. Uh, for those. No, we're like, okay. Uh, he's the creator of the Minnesota Public Radio Show uh, that ran from mm-hmm. 1974 to 2016. Um, he most recently was accused of being handsy in the uh, Me Too uh, movement, but I don't know if really well, much has come about from that since. I think the sh- yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, yeah, he's a old kind of specific weird talking guy. Um, I can't, I have no idea what he sounds like, but I remember he's, he's a very distinct looking man. Uh, so I can kind of, I get the dig they're going for prayer home companion. Definitely not for everybody. Um, did, did you just do a, a vocal impression and then after go, I have no idea what yeah. he sounds like. Yeah. Just to be, just to be clear, <laughs> he, he has a radio voice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Christopher Bowis. <laughs> Bowels. Bowels. Uh, yeah. One star. When a member of the House of Lords kills himself, his estate goes to his son. The only problem is that his son thinks he's Jesus Christ. The rest of the family tries to sabotage him and get him to snap out of it, but boy, they definitely didn't bargain for a psychosis to then make him think he's Jack the Ripper, who strangely gets along better than you might expect with all these stodgy Brits. There you go. Now you don't have to see it, because nothing about this film's execution improves upon the log line. It's a movie yelling satire for its entire running time, <laughs> never bothering to set up actual jokes behind its punchlines. Literally and figuratively, the cinematic equivalent of the aristocrats joke, but if it went on over two and a half hours. Um, nope, it's not like that joke, really, not literally or figuratively. But. I, um, he, they talk about how the film, like the film's not made well, and I don't think that's right at all. And we, we just went at length about how we thought the film was made pretty well. And then even me, where, I thought the sat like not even just satire, but the song stuff was a little heavy handed. But you know what? I thought they had wicked just one line like punch lines, like set up punch line, you know. This Christopher Bowles, Jarrett. They have a Thomas Merton quote on their page. Art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. I imagine he stares at this quote all day. Do you think he has like a vinyl printout of that text on his kitchen wall? Uh, I believe he probably has this tattooed on his thigh or something like that. But the back of the thigh so that other people can see it. Uh, They like uh, Taxi Driver. And uh, one of my favorite movies, The Apartment. And one of your favorite movies, Rushmore. And a movie that we just talked about in the preamble. Annie Hall. Whoa. They like a weird mix of movies. Some good movies, five stars, like High and Low, There Will Be Blood uh, and Heat. Some bad movies, five stars, like uh, 400 Blows. (laughs) And Boyhood. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Ryan Fisher, two stars. Mm. So long, so incoherent. It has a few great moments, but there's a lot of slack, and the whole is made up of an awkward mix of madcap and drawl in which the two styles negate each other. Some jokes are too broad, and the dark tone steps all over them. Other jokes are too subtle, and the satire isn't nearly subtle enough. Mm. People really go after that satire sometimes, and I think it just means that it didn't work for them, but Mm -hmm. sometimes I agree with you, Jared. So, I don't know. I I find that it's a satire is a weird thing creature i think i hated this although there may be 40 minutes intersped in the 150 minute runtime that i kind of loved it's not bad mm. it's not crazy. uh ryan fisher's un- are you still okay. reading the review no, that, that's it no i'm i'm just oh, okay i'm editorializing, are you just rambling? editorializing but okay, keep and, going. And mumbling that's it uh they got a good opinion yeah or good uh good taste 2001 magnolia the searchers Something called Three Colors Red. Oh, I don't no. know what that is. That's uh, K- K- Kuslowski, uh The guy did the mm. uh, Decalogue and stuff like that. There's a oh, oh. the Three Colors trilogy, red, white, and blue. Okay, I just found a, a big glaring hole though in their five star reviews. Night of the Hunter, a movie we will cover one day, and we're just teasing now. It's not five stars, man. I want to say. Overhyped. Overhyped, bro. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You tune in 500, 10 years from now, and we'll cover it then. That might be 10 years from now, but you know what? People might want to know what we think about that movie because it's very popular. But you know what else? I don't think that movie is that good. Sick burn. There you go. Cool. Well, that's the hate. Uh, I like this movie. RJ's like, yeah, it's okay. Um, yep. that's about, that's all I can expect. It's a movie, not for everybody. I can understand someone like really just being like, fuck this shit. But I felt that way with, uh, something like how to get ahead in advertising. So mm-hmm. there's that. Um, after the break, um, arts, I'm going to, I'm going to stab RJ in the guts, leave him for dead. 
And the butler will get blamed for it because he's a goddamn communist. Keeps ripping off the jungle fever ending. 